What is going on, guys? Welcome to Stock Talk with Nico Criticos. Today, we're going to do some stock analysis for Kronos Group. This is ticker CRON, one of the players in the cannabis space. Based off of their investor presentation, it looks like although they operate in different parts of the world, they have a more significant market share in Canada and in Israel. So here is some of their products and where they stand as far as like their spinach brand is number three as just a general general cannabis brand in Canada. The edibles, they have number one, flower number two, and all this different stuff. The other interesting thing I, I found on their investor presentation is that they are backed by Altria. And Altria has a pretty significant investment in them of $1.8 billion for a 45% stake. And the interesting thing is that was back in 2019 when the stock had a valuation of, you know, what, probably five times where it is today. Because right now it's a right under a billion dollar company. So they invested over $1.8 billion. And that's why you can see on their balance sheet that they actually had back then they had what one point they had over two billion dollars of assets and now that's come all the way down to only 1.1 billion so they're definitely moving through that cash and they're probably investing pretty heavily into the business so let's get started by looking at the revenue chart first right off the bat let's go to annual and let's see the revenue chart looks pretty strong i mean over the last five years we're looking at an average of 95 percent growth which is crazy. And then the last two years, we're looking at 40% growth. So it's slowing down a little bit because they're not going to be able to triple or quadruple their revenue every year like they were doing, you know, from 2016 up until 2020. So last year, they did $91 million of total revenue. And remember, this is a about a little over a $900 million company. So just keep that in mind. Net income, of course, as for many of these cannabis companies, they are a money losing company. And that brings us next into the, the valuation side of things because they don't really have a PE ratio. But if we look at the price to sales, we can see that, you know, the whole cannabis industry had a huge spike back in, in a, a couple of years ago. That's why you can see it was trading at a price to sales of 67, which is just outrageous. That should never have happened. And now it, it came back down to more realistic numbers. And we're looking at a price to sales of 11. Now, a price to sales of 11 is not cheap. By any metric, that is not cheap. Um, so normally you want to have a company that like they must be doing in, in incredible growth revenue-wise to justify that sort of price to sales. But if we actually look at the numbers, their their revenue was 91 million last year. It, it's coming down 12% to 80 million this year. And then next year it's only going to grow at about 20%. So it's not like they're doing 80% revenue growth or something crazy. They're barely even, you know, it, it's barely growing. Um, now, to justify that though, why I think it does make a little bit more sense is because the revenue growth is not crazy fast, but they have a lot of equity. Their balance sheet is pretty good. Not only the ratio of assets to liabilities is incredibly strong, at you know over what is this more than 12 times uh assets than liabilities that's that's fantastic and then the equity well the equity has actually been shrinking so that's the bad part the good part though is that you're getting 1.1 billion dollars of equity and i always check to see to make sure that it's not a majority of it in goodwill or intangibles and that's not the case here there's only 26 million in intangibles so they have a solid they have a solid ratio of assets to liabilities and although the equity is shrinking, um, you're still getting, the bottom line is you're getting over a billion dollars of tangible equity and you're only paying 900 million, right? So that's why it's, it kind of justifies that that valuation. And that's why it's 11 times sales. Then we get to market, or is, is it innovative? Yes, they're in the cannabis space. So of course I would consider this an innovative company, innovative market. Market share, no, you know, they're only doing a couple of hundred million or whatever. And this is going to be a huge space. No return on invested capital. The equity, how I showed you, was not growing, which is really, that's not too great to see. Maybe it makes sense because they're spending the money or I, I don't know. I don't know. The equity is definitely over 15%. I think it's over 100%, right? Share count decreased. No, unfortunately not, um, which this is something you can normally expect as well. 
but I mean, it's, you know, it is what now, if it was giant increases of 40%, that's really bad. But if it's only 1% or 5% or something, that's not a big deal. Then we go to, are the assets 2X liabilities? Yes, remember it's more than 12 times. Profit margins are negative. Cash receivables, of course, more than their uh, negative income. No dividend. Company is barely over 10 years old, being founded in 2012. And their free cash flow is not growing because this chart is also negative like the other ones. So all in all, um, pretty similar to the other cannabis companies I made videos on. <coughs> just that it's early on in this space, although I see this space being a huge... Um, maybe a huge growth opportunity, right? And I'm sure there's lots of money to be made in the space. I would not be investing in anything like this anytime soon. I like to have, I like to see a lot more predictability, a lot more, a lot more um, evidence, I guess you could say of running the business. So that's my only take on this, but it is interesting that Alt Altria is backing it. That's interesting. Um, but we just, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know who's going to, who's going to get bought out, who's going to gain market share and how that's all going to happen. So it's, I mean, based on where it's traded at in the past, this whole, you know, $6 all the way up to $13 range, based on that, paying two bucks is not not horrible, right? That's not horrible. So I think the risk is definitely, even with it, it, it jumped up, uh, what, over 46% in the last month. So there is there has been definitely some, some uh, buyers buying into it the last couple months. But even with, even with that being taken into consideration, we're still, you're still talking about you're getting over a billion dollars of equity. You're only paying 900 million. And it's because there's there's a lot of risk that comes with a company like this. And But if you're right, and this company is, they, they make it through and they become, let's say, one of the top players, then yeah, then this, this stock could 10x or 20x or, you know, something like that. But that's the way I look at it. Um, I'm curious to see what you guys think. So comment down below what your thoughts are, and I will see you in the next video.